Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Shareholder responsibilities for state-owned enterprises that previously fell under the Department of Public Enterprises have been assigned. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the implications. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What was announced regarding the SOEs that previously fell under the DPE? Well, it's been a, a sort of an area that is of uncertainty because we know that the DPE was officially closed down under the once the Government of National Unity came into play. And there were these major enterprises that uh, were they going to fall under the presidency or were they going to fall under their line departments? And the decision now that we know is that they're going to fall under their line departments. So, so entities such as Alexcor goes under the Department of Mineral Resources and Petroleum and the big ticket ones, uh, Eskom under the Minister of Electricity and Energy and then Transnet goes into the Department of Transport uh, along with SAA and SA Express. So this is a big decision and it's been long awaited um, and it was basically up to the President to reassign this. Uh, there is obviously still the legacy of the staff at DPE and it seems some of those will be absorbed in maybe into the line departments but it's going to be managed out of the Presidency. But basically there's now certainty as to where these entities, who are the shareholder ministers for these entities. Uh, it always used to be the Minister of Public Enterprises, it's now going to be these line ministries. Why were they separated from their line departments in the first place? Well, it goes back many years and there was a suspicion right at the front that this was about packaging these large entities for privatisation. But this was never government policy. Government never had a policy of privatising these entities, really. And, and it was really about looking at the, this issue, what they call moral hazard. So you have an entity that operates in an environment where they were generally a monopoly business, um, but there were other actors now coming in and there was a policy that was encouraging new actors into, say for instance, the transport environment or into the electricity environment. And it was important, the view was, to avoid conflicts of interest, to have these uh, policy departments having sort of a, a sort of a pristine look what is important for the, 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 um, the industry as it's going forward and what policies and what legislation is required for that and not be contaminated by the commercial interests of the enterprises. So, that, so it's international best practice in many countries to have other departments or a holding company of some form to separate uh, these entities from the policy makers. So that's really why it was done, and that's sort of the, the rationale, and that's how it has been for a couple of decades now. Um, uh, very Traditionally, these did fall under line departments, but there was this view with these large entities. Now, they're still very significant, Transnet and Eskom, very significant. Some of these other entities are shadows of their former self, so they haven't really been well governed, even though we've had sort of this theoretical dealing with this moral hazard or this conflict of interest. And we know what's happened during the state capture years. So, you know, an entity like SAA is nothing like it was back in the day. That used to, that used to be part of Transnet if we, if we go back, uh, back in history. There were always tussles around these entities uh, going back into the early days of democracy between the Minister of Transport, for instance, uh, and the Minister of Public Enterprises as to who would have Transnet responsibility. So it was always a little bit of a tussle and a toing and froing. And it was a, a prior to President Robert Poser's announcement of last week as to where they were going to be. It was there was sort of some toing and froing and some tussling and muscle flexing around this. So there's now certainty, and it it doesn't really fall within best practice, international best practice of separating policy departments um, and uh, and implementation departments or shareholder responsibility. So. The idea is then to try and eventually move these out of the line departments and under a uh, holding company arrangement. How will the potential conflicts of interest be managed? Well, that's the big question because this holding company should have been in place, but uh, it's not in place. Um, and it's going to evolve, and that's what the, the presidency, the minister in the presidency, uh, Ramakopa, is having to deal with. Uh, and set up this whole in parallel. But these conflicts are going to be real. So what's in the interest, for instance, of Eskom at the moment? 
is not necessarily directly in the interest of the electricity supply industry as it's transitioning. So um, the other minister, Ramakhopa, Jose Jens Ramakhopa, is going to have to be sensitive to that. You know, he's going to, as, his un as he unpacks policy, and those are the key levers for the transition, we've already got a new legislation that's come through in the form of the Electricity Regulation Amendment uh, Act, and, but also the policies that are emerging around, uh, for instance, the Integrated Resource Plan that's going to be updated, the Integrated Energy Plan. Is that going to be contaminated by the commercial interests of Eskimo, which he's also now responsible for? It can easily happen, and it can easily distort the policy that we, that we need to help us manage it through this transition. Similar situation with Barbara Creasy and Transnet, and the fact that there's going to be now um, multiple players coming into rail and into the port system. You know, does she <laughs> put the interests of Transnet's commercial interests before the, the national interest in some ways in terms of the, the, what the policy direction should be to get a, a much more competitive, cost-effective transport system? We know that that's a big a problem for South Africa's economy is that our transport costs are too high and unreliable. And we've seen this um, move from road to rail because of the collapse of transnet service. Now, as we bring in third parties onto the rail, is it going to be fair and equitable in terms of the way we set policy? So I think it is a moral hazard here. There is potential conflict of interest. These ministers, that's why it's better, it would have been better to not look at the personalities it said, what is the best structure? And this is not the best structure. We need to move to a separation between policy and implementation as soon as possible, preferably through this holding company structure where the, the potential for direct political inf interference uh, is reduced. Now, the VPE and whatever has not covered itself in Dory, as we know, because of state capture and there has been political interference. So there's not much love lost there. and. Uh, but I think people haven't really seen uh, what the potential is for moral hazard and for conflicts of interest. And so now it's up to civil society to be very alert to the policies that are coming out of these, particularly out of electricity and energy and transport over the per this period. We are in this gray area of governance, uh, of political governance for these state-owned companies. It's a real, it's, it is a potential area where bad things can happen and it's going to have to rely on the diligence of the minister and the alertness of the minister to these conflicts and managing them. And that's not ideal. It should be in place structurally, rather. So we hope that we can get to this, uh, this uh, separation through the holding company as soon as possible. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.